genetics gives you the basic blueprint, let's say, of the brain. What parts of the brain are formed, what size they have, the main routes of connectivity, say. And a lot of that is what happens during embryonic development, so during gestation. And, but once the brain is born, once, once the baby is born, there's still a lot to go on. And it, in the beginning, what you see is a process of growing exuberance. The brain is still gaining neurons, it's still gaining synapses, so connections. And while that gives you a brain that has an enormous amount of connectivity and neurons, it isn't really functional yet. It's really expensive, it costs a lot of energy. That's why nutrition is so important during development and in early childhood as well. But so it has this ton of neurons and synapses, but it's really not functional yet. And that's exactly because it has so much. It's like a block of raw material that's ready to be sculpted. It isn't anything yet. It's not meaningful yet, but it can be turned into anything. And that's where experiences come in. That's where opportunities in the environment come in because it's depending on what's meaningful to each individual brain that those connections and neurons are sculpted. Some are um, strengthened and remain and a lot of the other ones are actually just removed. They disappear from the brain. It's exactly because of this exuberance that the brain is able to adapt to the environment that it has. For some people, it will be a peaceful environment where you can turn your attention to good things, like just learning, exploring new, new possibilities. Um, so the, the brain is shaped to work in that environment. It's shaped according to that environment. But if the reality is different, if the reality is dealing with violence, is being attacked, it's living under con constant risk, threats to your life, the brain, of course, adapts to that. So you have, uh, in a way, a, very, a brain that's very well adjusted to that harsh reality. You have a brain that learns to expect the worst that learns to, depending on the circumstances, depending on some biological um, basis, you have a brain that may either learn or ch to choose to withdraw and not react and just protect itself by not exposing itself to much. Or on the contrary, you may have a brain that adapts to adversity by becoming violent. That's usually the response to being treated violently. The changes that happen in the brain because of the way it's raised, let's say, what it's, it's exposed to, um, neuroscientists have been learning that those changes affect not only that individual's brain, but also are transmitted down, or they may be transmitted down to the next generation. So especially those characteristics related to dealing with stress, to coping with stress, anxiety-related, um, aggressiveness. Those characteristics lead to um, being exposed to, to harsh environments leads to changes in the, not in the DNA, not in your genes, but on your, uh, the proteins and, and other chemicals that are attached to your genes, to your DNA, and that change the way that your genes are expressed. So those are called epigenetic changes. And those actually can be passed on to the next generation, which means that if you're exposed to stress and violence in early life, your children one day will may be born already predisposed to dealing with uh, a, a harsh environment as well. On the other hand, the opposite is also true, which is a really good thing. So if you, when, when the child receives tender parental maternal care and is treated kindly, the similar changes also happen upon the DNA. So you also have similar epigenetic changes that not only make that child um, have very soft, healthy responses to stress as a child, it, she, she grows into a healthy adult with healthy responses to stress and 
Moreover, once she becomes a mother herself, those changes are passed on to her, to her child. And on top of that, that because that new mother was treated tenderly as an infant, she has a very good chance of being tender to her infant as well. So when you take care of your child, when you, when you hold your child in your arms and give it tenderness and attention, you're not only contributing to the well-being of your child, you're contributing to the well-being of your grandchildren as well.